All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here on the Studs Podcast. This is Mike. We have Keith and Louie. What's going on, guys? Uh, not too much, Mike. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. How about you, Louie? Doing great, man. Happy Saturday. Happy That's Saturday. Great. You know, just doing dandy. Just can't complain, you know. But enough of the pleasantries. You know, let's get, let's get right into it. Uh, today we're talking about the top, your team, your starting five, Bully Ball. So we put our top five together of the most intimidating, maybe even dirty, grittiest players in the NBA. We put together a starting five. We each put together our own. Now, what would you what would you qualify as as a bully ball team? Like it's got to be someone who can trash talk. It's got to be someone who gets physical almost ninety percent of the time they're in the game. Yep. It's always start in trouble. They make those dirty hustle plays. So that's that's who we'd consider. So um, let's get let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, starting at center, Mister uh, Mister Louis, who would you put as center? So this was a tough one for me because um, centers nowadays are kind of gone by the wayside. But for me, I put uh, Montrez Harrell at the starting center for the Clippers. I think he he's a, he's a beast on the glass, beast on the boards, and he just plays with so much physicality and. I don't know. I don't see too many centers match his kind of physicality and his intensity. So mm-hmm. he's my starting center. I can see that. I can see that, yeah. Keith. Well, this one was a tough one for me, too. And, uh, you know, uh, for my starting center, I went with uh, Joel Embiid. You know, I went with Joel Embiid, obviously, because he's the best player in the 76ers. You know, <laughs> he does a lot of work. But, uh, very physical on the glass, you know. Like like Louis was saying, you don't see a lot of traditional centers. They're going by the wayside, but he, he's he's a pure center, you know, pure glass cleaner, finishes in the paint. Uh, yeah, I like him, Joel Embiid. I feel like he's so he could be so soft at times too, though. Yeah, I wouldn't put him and on hey, my list just for that. Hey man, hey, he's a beast. You, you, you he's a beast. That, hey hey, even Shaq had a had a had a, had a nice soft touch. He had a nice soft touch to, to finish at the rim sometimes. You know what I mean? That's okay. That's you know? not true at all. That's not yes, what do you mean? Well, Shaq missed free throws, so you know. <laughs> yeah, his touch was too hard. Well, listen, this is my list. Joel Embiid's on it. <laughs> All right. All right. Keith. All right. I'll let you, I'll my, let you live. At, at, my, at my five, uh, oh, that's cool that we got three different people. I have Steven Adams. Like Steven that. Adams. He's, uh, he's pesky. He's, he's very cocky, very physical. Um, he sets some very hard screens. Uh, yeah, he's just overall he's physical. I I always I always like Stephen Adams. He just plays. I feel like he never. I feel like he never misses time. I feel like he's just there every game. Every game, he's, I just feel like he's always there. But he always makes some some good plays. Um, so yeah, so Stephen Adams definitely at at center. All right, moving on. Power forward, Mister Herb. All right, power forward. You know. No, a tough decision, but I got to go with Anthony Davis for this one. You know, I think Anthony Davis can definitely be a bully in the post. You know, finishes some sick alley oops. Um, he's sort of like a, he's sort of like a like a center almost. You know, he could play both if he wanted to, but he, I know he likes being a power forward. So I don't know. I definitely think he's a dominant power forward. So for Anthony Davis, yeah, you know, he, he does it all: rebounding, finishing, you know, shooting as well if need be. Beast. Definitely. Yeah, it's a good pick. It's a good pick. What's your nickname for him? Oh, right. Anthony Big D Davis. That's the radio <laughs> version. That's the radio version. All right, thanks for <laughs> uh, Louis. Uh, Keith, it sounds like you're putting together an all-star team there, man. You know the topic know. is a uh, bully ball team. Hey, man, this is my list. Like I said, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. This is my list. <laughs> All right, so at Power Forward, I have, um, I have Draymond Green. He's the ultimate poop talker, ultimate smack talker, whatever you'd like to say. We'll keep it PG-13. Um, he kind of is a vocal leader on his team. He sets some pretty dirty screens. Uh, we've seen that in the past. Um, just an absolute um, beast in the paint, beast on the boards, can dribble, can pass. Sometimes he can shoot. I think he's very undersized, and he plays bigger than his size, so I just think he's a very tough player, and that's why I picked Draymond for the power forward position. All right. 
All right, those are uh, those are some good picks. Uh, my power four, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going off. I'm gonna get off flack for this one. Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris. I don't know. It's something about <laughs> it's something about him. He's. Oh, let me tell you this. He's built. He's built. He's strong, and he balls. I like. The he pick. does ball. He he's feisty. He's always starting something. Um, of course, you like to pick Louie. Of course, you do. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a he's a baller. I, I, and, and you know, um, I just put him down. You know, he talks trash. He's not he's not afraid. He'll miss like thirty five shots. He'll still take the thirty six and probably hit it. He's just a baller. And he's a beast. He's strong. So definitely Marcus Morris. Um, so that's my power forward. So uh, at small forward, I have. And this is on um, pure just balling and trash talking ability. Because I think, I think he's a, I think he's a beast. Is he, is he shown to be a, a complete winner yet? Not yet, but he's taken a couple. Uh, he's taken Miami, Minnesota. He trash talks. He's super confident, and that's, uh, and he backs it up. That's Jimmy Butler. Jimmy that's Butler. He ultimate trash. The best, the best story of him is when he went into the Timberwolves practice dominated Towns and Wiggins and then looked at them. He's like, you need me. And then they traded him. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, like, yeah. So I think he's an absolute, uh, you're putting him at small forward though. Yeah. I could send him a small, cause I, I kind of have two point guards at, at point guard uh, and shooting guard. Okay. So I kind of put him at small forward. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about you, Louie? Uh, it's funny that you mentioned Jimmy Butler. That's who I actually had on my list too. as small forward. Yeah. Yeah, so wow, okay. he kind of took mine right there. I think he's just solid. I mean, do you have any other reasons why? I think he's just just uh, an absolute dog, man. I mean, besides yeah. the Minnesota points in in Chicago, but what he's doing for Miami right now is just kind of turning a culture. But he's just tough guy, you know, built, and also backs up his trash talk, and he he, he proves it every night, and he makes every team better that he goes on. So, and he's just think he's yeah. a dog, absolute yep. dog. Yeah, he's a baller. How about you, uh, Mr. Keith? Uh, all right, for the next edition for the, uh, the the Keith Herb All-Star selection, I'm going with uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo for a small oh, forward. <laughs> he's a beast. Uh, yeah, no, okay. Giannis is a beast. Yeah, he's that. a beast. Good finisher. You like know, can, can be a good trash talker at like times. You know, uh, Beast on defense, beast on offense, beast on the boards. Good good inside player, finisher all around. You know, So, uh, yeah. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, key turbo all star selection number three. <laughs> uh, I, like <laughs> I like that pick though. Yeah, he bullies you team. down low. Yeah, he but does, he's a yeah. baller too. I, I mean, he bullies you down low, definitely. All right, moving on. Shooting guard, shooting guard, uh, Mr. Herb. Well, you guys already said it. I put Jimmy Butler as my shooting guard. Uh, awesome, awesome player. Obviously, you know, great on defense. You know, trash talker. I'll add in because you guys already said it all, but I'll, I'll add in uh, like a little s- something I heard on 2K when I was I'll playing add in? my career or whatever. That yeah, like an add in, like I'll piggyback this little something funny that I heard. I heard that that guy he's freaking <laughs> like he he's got like a he drives you on a minivan in the off season. I heard, and he has like a baby on board sticker in the back. Yeah, he funny. does. He does. He does. Yeah, he's, uh... <laughs> he's a character, huh? Yeah, he um. Yeah, I read a thing about funny. him last year where like the whole summer he had no cable. He lived in like an apartment with nothing in it and just worked out in red. Yeah. And worked out in red. Yeah. Yeah, like a like yeah. a shallow month. Yeah. He's uh he's he's entertaining. He's a different breed. Definitely entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. He'd, Character, he'd probably get yeah. himself, you know, in big trouble playing bully ball, but he's entertaining. Yeah. How about you? Shooting guard. Uh, yeah. shooting guard, I have Marcus Smart. Um coming from a Celtics fan. I he's my favorite player, you know. He embodies he's the embodiment of Celtic pride. Um just from everything he does from guarding one through five, his intensity, his hustle plays, and just, you know, when he gets into scraps with those uh, players that we don't like, a, a la J.R. Smith, um, a la any, any player that kind of just – Marcus Smart will guard your best player, will get under your skin, and dude, dude's like 6'3", 240. He's a freaking bulldozer, man. That dude is someone you want on your bully ball team, and mm-hmm. if you don't have him, that's, that's questionable Solid. in my yep. opinion. Yeah, definitely shooting guard, Marcus Smart. Oh, it's mine. Just gritty. He's he's just ball. Mm. Like he's he's a he's a dog, in a good way. Like he, I don't think he's dirty. He's not a dirty player. He's just 
physical. No. Like I, I don't I, I, I right. I don't think he's that dirty. Um but he's he's gritty. He makes those plays. He's you want him on your team. That's like Kevin Garnett. You always people hated playing against him, but having him on exactly. your team, you always wanted him on your exactly. team. You know, that's that's Marcus Smart. So all right. Moving on, last one. Point guard. Louis? For my point guard, I got Russell Westbrook. Dude is an absolute dog, man. Um, just to not repeat the same. He competes. Dude is when he turns it up and he's on that gear, man. He's a very scary player to play against. Also, just an mm-hmm. athletic freak can get to the rim. But I don't know his attitude, his his passion for the game is just defines bully ball to me. He's always taking it to the rim, um, challenging defenders down low. Mm-hmm. And he that's why I think he's uh, number one on my point guard on bully ball list. Yeah, you have him, the ultimate competitor, even though he hasn't won anything yet. But he, he still competes. Yep. You can't question that he competes. And then you got James Harden, who's an absolute dog. <laughs> hey, he can put up all the stats, but like Harden will never win. I think Westbrook can win, but uh, that season just in Oklahoma been... City where he averaged a triple-double, I think, two seasons in a row. That kind of defines the toughness. Oh, that's that crazy, he, yeah. Bodies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely a good pick. Uh, Keith, me. Uh, you guys already said it. I got uh, Marcus Smart for my, my so, point guard selection for the All Star so, team. So see, it wasn't an All Star uh, selection. It, it turned around. Yeah, it was a good pick. No, Marcus Smart's always an All Star <laughs> in my book. Like always that. an All Star in my book. Yeah, you guys already said it. He does. He does all the dirty work. Gets under your skin. I'll never forget that time. Uh, he we, earlier this season he was guarding uh, Giannis, and he. He got he got what was it? He got tangled up. He like made Giannis fall on him, or he fell on him, and like I don't know if one of them got a tech or something like that. But oh my god, that was a great game to watch. I and mean, he won that game yep. too. I'm pretty sure. Absolutely beast of a player. Yep. So Marcus. The best moment for him was against Houston when they came back from like 30 right, points. Yeah, I remember that. And he drew yep. the two offensive fouls against that gutless. The James guard Harden. was rocking, man. I remember watching. Oh, that. oh, oh man. That was the best. All right. My, uh, my point, God, the final person on this list. You can't – I mean, I don't think you can have him and Smart on the same team because uh, it's Patrick Beverly. He is a dog. <laughs> he's a dog. He balls hard. Um, I, I mean, he's very similar to Marcus Smart. I think Marcus Smart has the better body build. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, Beverly, he'll, go, he'll guide you full court. He'll guide you full court, you know. Um, so, Patrick Beverly, definitely. So, uh, just to recap, what would you guys, uh, if you could say your list, I'm going to go from center. So, center would be Steven Adams, Powell Ford, Marcus Morris, uh, Jimmy Butler, small forward, shooting guard, Marcus Smart, and then point guard, Patrick Beverly. Uh, Keith, what was your list? Uh, so, my list went like this. Uh, center, Joel Embiid, uh, Powell Ford, Anthony Davis, uh, small forward, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, shooting guard Jimmy Butler and that point guard Marcus like 10 Smart. rings right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. five, I got Montrez Haller. At the four, I got Draymond Green. At the three, I have Jimmy Butler. At the two, I have Marcus Smart, and at the one, I have Russell Westbrook. All three, uh, all three solid lists. I do have one honorable mention. I like to throw in there um, for his epic uh, shoulder breaking. In the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals against Cleveland, and that's uh, my man Kelly the Clinical Linux. He is. Oh, I knew that was coming. He, I knew he's it. had two dirty moments it. in his career. That breaking the shoulder, where he's, <laughs> he probably didn't even yeah. need to do it. He's just a goof. And then you have, and then you have him. Remember when he got he got bodied by Kelly Oubre? Oh, remember that? He's just yeah. standing there, Oubre, bam. Oh, I have my two God. mentions too, Mike. But, I got um two mentions at point guard. Well, no, one mention at point guard. Uh, do we remember <laughs> when um the old point guard from the Boston Celtics, Rajon Rondo? I think he's an absolute dog, man. Uh, maybe a jerk in a way. I remember yeah. um when he threw hands with um Chris Paul. <laughs> that was yeah. He's like, you want to go? Oh yeah. He hit him with the left and a right. I was like, oh my goodness. I yeah. knew he had that in him too. Oh, he's a beast. And by the way, Kelly Kelly Olynyk is not really an honorable mention. He is soft as can be. He's soft uh, I just, as baby. Food. I just thought that was <laughs> yeah. funny. Uh, I I remember trip, trips over trips over his own two oh feet. That God. guy, such a such a clutch dude. 
I have a, I have a uh, somewhat not really honorable mention, but an honorable mention, and because uh, he's not really, he's a free agent right now. Isaiah Thomas, that would be my only other guy, really. Uh, hell of a player, man. I know he's not playing right now he's for any a baller. team, but uh, I, yeah, absolutely. You know what is he? How tall is that guy? Like five nine, and he's yeah, going out taking it to the rim yeah. every possession. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yep. That yep, that would be my only other guy. I want to go out. Yeah, he's like a scoring dog. That's right. Um, I have one more yep. just from a Celtics perspective. Throwback, dog, beast, Tony Allen. Tony Allen. Tony Allen. <laughs> he could play defense. What makes it's you say physical. that? He sh- yeah, he played. True, yeah. Not, no one could yeah. shut down Kobe, but I mean, he did a great job yeah, in him Kobe against the two finals. To, to uh, the medium stuff yeah. that Tony. That was Allen one of his toughest play. people. Mm-hmm. Absolute yeah. dog. So, anyway, well, that um. That's going to wrap up that first segment of our podcast today, our, uh, our, our bully ball team, you know, so uh, that'll wrap that up. We're going to take a little quick break and uh, we'll be right back with our top five pump up songs during quarantine that we work out to be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Now, please let me explain. Here's why. Number one, it's free. What's better than free? Number two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can literally go outside, record whatever you want to, and upload it. That's that easy. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more streaming services. Here's another great point. You can make more money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Okay, you can make as much money as you want, and there's no minimum on how many listeners uh, will need to listen to it. And lastly, it's everything you need to make a podcast, a successful podcast in one place. So they make it super easy for you. Here's what you need to do right now. If you're interested in making a podcast, you need to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started now. You do not want to miss out. Get started again. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor dot F-M dot com to get started now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a... Still in quarantine, and the world is still going through a crisis right now. And we have a lot of time on our hands to do a lot of stuff right now, especially if you're unemployed. Now, if you're essential and you're working, then we thank you, and you guys are are, are unbelievable. Um, but for a lot of us right now, we have a lot of time on our hands. And that time will either be spent, you know, sitting down, playing video games. I, I don't play a lot of video games. And that's a joke. If we play a lot of video games, yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah. <laughs> um, but one of the things a lot of people are doing right now are, are, are actually working out. Or maybe they're just sitting and eating donuts, whatever it is. But um, we put together our top five pump up songs. Um, I, I, my songs, I, I, I've, been, I've been listening to these for a long time. I got to say, though, I, I, I don't listen to a lot of pump up music when I work out. I really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I. I do. I do. Um, my pump up music is like a lot of rap stuff, but I, I mean, just for the record, you know, I do listen to like a lot of different things, you know, like country rock or whatever, but I, I, I'll, I'll, all my, all my songs come from rap. So that's, so it was a hard, it was yeah. a hard listen. I feel like when you know? I was younger, I listened to a lot of like music, but now it's like, I can just go out and run and not need any, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, Stick to the I don't script, know about Michael. running. Come Run, on, man. Running sucks. I can't do <laughs> it when I run. I know. Going off script. But, uh, yeah, come on, man. I, I, my apologies. That's, that's you know, that's what, <laughs> that's what we do. Um, yeah, so we're going to go through our top five pump-up songs, and then at the end, we got our debut of the long-anticipated segment called Keats Soft Stools of the Week. Uh, we are not going to get into a response this time. He'll just do it when it's time. So, so we'll be getting into that in a couple minutes. Right, top baby. five pump-up songs good. um all right starting with uh starting with mr herb what's your fat uh fit we'll go worst to best no nope. worst to best all right my number five um pump up jam when i'm working out uh i'm going with uh better now by post malone uh for the reason that i don't know i, I don't know because everyone's got that one x you know what i mean <laughs> that uh no just listen hear me out hear me out everyone's everyone's got that one x who I don't know. You don't. You, you didn't end on great terms or whatever. And uh, whenever I hear this song, I always think about you know that. And uh, I don't know. This gets me motivated, especially if I'm on the treadmill. You know, because I can't. I can't run. You know, just with listening to nothing. 
So yeah, number five, got it now by Post Malone. That's a good one. Shout out to you. Shout out to your exes. (laughs) Shout out to your exes. Are you doing better now? (laughs) He's up right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, right right now I'm stuck at home, but yeah, doing my best. Yeah, that's so funny. Uh, uh, Louis, Uh, for my number five, I have um, Monster by Meek Mill. Yeah. All right. I like Meek Mill screaming in my ear. Kind of gets me going. My uh, my number five. So I uh, I don't know. I'm a little sensitive when it comes to pump up songs because I don't get pumped up by like a lot of the fast paced music. I actually get pumped up by a lot of the slower stuff. Why I don't know. Yeah, it's like the emotional really? end okay. of it. I don't know what it is. Um, but and also all my throwback songs are, are, are all my pump up songs are throwbacks. So that's no surprise. My number five because I am one um, is Return of the Mac. And I just say that. I just say that beat come in. So I think of the Cheetos return of the Mac and Cheetos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big big Mac. Yeah, big Mac. I love that. I think about that all the time too. So yeah. yeah that's so, so that's definitely definitely <laughs> number uh, five. Louis, uh, number four. Right, number four. I got "Wake Me Up Inside" by Evanescence. Uh, that is yeah. Wow. That song. Wow, uh, great song. First time I heard wow. that song, I was like, wow, just chills and goosebumps and. Um, the first time I heard that song, I was like seven years old, and I did not know what yeah, the hell was going on. But yeah, song great jam, just, though. Whenever oh, I hear absolutely. the beat drop, is that the I, one? Just, I don't know. It makes me. Is that the one that goes, wake yeah, me up? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think yes, I had Mike, that that's the name of the song, too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Right, right, no, one no, of the other CDs. Now Now that's oh, what that's I call awesome. music. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what I call music. That's a good yeah, one, man. Like that. All right. All right, Mr. Herb. All right. Me, uh, number four, my number four selection for the all-star list of all-time pump-up songs goes That's to uh, All the Lights by Kanye West. Because he talks about coming, it's all about, uh, the whole song is about like adversity and coming back, restarting over, building great yourself song. back up. So yeah, great song to walk on the treadmill to. Great Absolutely. song. Number four. Great song. My number four, another throwback. Gotta have Phil Collins in there. Um, that's Easy Lover. It's not, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not. Oh, a, easy uh, lover. You, 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 you were thinking, you know, I could feel it in the air tonight. Nah, it's easy lover. It comes in with the drum, so it's like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, man. This gets me going. This gets me going. And then Earth, Wind, and Fire comes in, and they're just doing the vote. Oh, man. Phil Collins. That's my number, uh, number four. So, uh, number three. Uh, we'd like to give that number three. You can go first. Yeah. Me? All right. My number three, uh, my number three selection goes uh, to uh, Lupe Fiasco. Lupe. It's called, uh, the show Fiasco. goes on. The show goes on. <laughs> yeah, Lupe. That's a great song, dude. That's, That's a, a good, good song. song. Let him live, man. Lupe. Good song. Lupe. When you're doing, squ- when, when you're doing, squ- when you Lupe Fiasco. When you when you're doing squats. Wait, I missed about, the song you know, because I was just laughing on. at the pronunciation of the name. What, what was the song? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the show, the show goes, show on. goes yeah, on. Yeah, that's a solid song. The show goes that on. That used to yeah. be on NFL Tour. Nice song to listen to. I think. I think. Really? I think yeah, I think yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, that was the other one. That was, um, uh, your superstar. Yeah, no, that's, that's a different one. song, yeah. Yeah, show goes on. That's a great one. <laughs> Lupe. <laughs> yep. Lupe, if you ask Is that? I thought you said it. Like, I did it. I didn't think you named said it like that. Maybe you are right. Is it's it? It's Lupe Fiasco, dude. Yeah. It is right. Dude, yeah, I looked it up. Oh, Fiasco, Lupe Fiasco, Fiasco, tomato, tomato. Listen, Mike, I'm, I, I, Mike, I might be stupid, but I'm not <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Louis. My number three is A Victory by Biggie Smalls and P. Diddy. Nice. Dude, uh, that, when I heard, first heard that song on Fight Night 2003, man, uh, I just knew that was one of those songs I would just always listen to. That's a good one. That's, I really like the show goes on. Yeah, I forgot about that song. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. That's really <laughs> wow. Yeah. Does that feature Lloyd? I don't think no. so. I think it's just him. Um, I don't know who's no. in it, but I think I don't that's, remember that's who's in solid. it. Yeah, that's, I think it is. You know him. what? That's gonna get my uh my 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 hard stool of the day right there. That song. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a Tommy point. That's the hard stool of the day right there. Uh <laughs> All my right, number cool. three, 
my number three Fibra. for um, all the bars is it's a slower song, but it's a it, it's a it just pumps me up. I, I like the feel of it. I like the sample, and that's uh, I don't know if you heard this one. It's Tupac to live and die in L.A. It was released after he died, uh, and I just the the sample on it, the 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 what he talks about in there, um, yeah, it's just it starts off with a little like news anchor saying all rumors about him, and then he just comes in and rat and it's yeah to live and die in L.A. gets me pumped. Have you guys ever heard that one? I, will I haven't heard of it either. A, yeah, that's a great one. I be- great one. I believe you. Um, yeah. Number number two, I have actually a Biggie Smalls, um, and it's not it's not it's not like a hit. It's 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 one it has one twelve. I don't think it has anyone else. It's uh, called Sky's the Limit. Mm. Sky's the Limit. Huh. All right. Yeah, I don't know if you guys yeah, heard that one. Either. Yeah, great. Gr- yeah, love that. I, I just something. I think it's just the feel of the song. Again, I get I get pumped up by the weird like slower. I don't know, but Sky's the Limit has a good message in it. And awesome vocals, so I like that one. Uh, yeah, that's my that's my number two. I'll never forget one time. Funny, a funny story. I was sleeping, and then when I sleep, I have like the rain sounds on. Yeah. And I had the song on my my cue, and I forgot to take it off my cue. So I had my sleep playlist, but I had this song in my cue. So it's like two a.m. in the morning. I'm knocked out, and then all of a sudden, the song just pops up. I thought I was in a bad dream. It's <laughs> blasting in my room. That's awesome. I'm like, what is this? That's I'm awesome. like waking up. I'm like, oh my god, uh, it was scary. I thought it was like something was happening. Uh, <laughs> that's anyway, awesome. that's what. Wicked funny. Two, that's my number two. That's right. Dude. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, it was scared. Yeah. All right, Louis, number two. number two. This is one of my all-time favorite songs. It just, I think these four artists that killed, absolutely killed the song. It's um, "Forever" by Drake, Kanye, Lil Wayne, and Eminem. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely, one Solid. of my favorite songs. They absolutely, each verse was absolutely murdered, and the beat and the sound production is was insane. I remember hearing this song at um a PC Friars game and I absolutely was like drawn to the song. That was, was that wasn't that a more than a game? Was it that on that been, soundtrack? Um for it was LeBron, in the, the LeBron the movie? commercial with Drake. I don't know if you remember that where they decomposed his body and then they put it back together. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. That's when you, yeah. That's my number two. Yeah. Yeah. That's a solid pick right there. Solid pick. I'll still give it to the show goes on though. That's still my heart stool. All right, all right. Well, uh, here's another one coming at you because my number two is uh, "The Good Life" by Kanye West. Another oldie but a goodie. A lot of Kanye songs song. on this list. Yep. Yeah. Hey. Back in the day, he used hey, to be when good. He's, when he's doing his thing, he's the best. Yeah. Yeah, when he's doing like his thing, he's awesome. Song. That's right, baby. Mm-hmm. Another good Kanye one good is stuff. "Paranoid." I don't know if you heard that one. That's from no, his like clean yet. album. It's from uh, eight oh eights and heartbreak. That's not a very popular mm. song, but yeah. Paranoid. I, I, I... No, yeah, no, I like it though. It's, it's a solid beat to it. It's kind of like old school, but all right, number ones, Mister uh, Mister Herb. All right, well, my number one pick. It's gonna be a little bit of a cliche, but I'm gonna go with uh, Headlines by Drake. Uh, a really good song to vibe to when you're working out. I don't know. It helps you get helps you get through that last rep. You know, if you're lifting weights and stuff like that. I don't know. I love number one headlines by Drake. A little bit of a that's cop a good out. One. I like that song. It's a good song. No, that's not a cop out. That's a good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, it's the Louis. My number one. Um, I like this artist a lot. Um, kind of just his vibe and stuff. I got "Breathe" by Fabulous. I just love that song. I love that New York beat. I don't know, just something about it just makes mm-hmm. me want to go kill somebody. No, not really, but makes me want to. <laughs> wow, me wanna, wow, yeah, we're gonna cut makes that. Makes me want to lift weights. You know, <laughs> it makes me want to just prove something. I don't know. I just like that song. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I feel. Uh, I, know, I feel like the number one's got to have like that meaning behind it. Like it's just, it just affects you in a certain way. Blocking and this like one like does. It, it is a Michael it Jackson is. song. Oh, I knew it. Okay. Yeah. It is. Number one, but it's not a well known one. It's human. Um, it was I was on I did talk about it at length on the uh ranking the top five Michael Jackson albums on YouTube right now. You can subscribe, <laughs> like, comment, share. Number one, 
is uh, another part of me. Another part of me. Oh, man. 1987. That song just comes in. It's like... Oh, it's... Oh, man. What's your favorite Michael Jackson song? It just off topic. gets... Um, another part of me would be number three yep. on the list. I have uh, Human Nature is my number cool. one. Very cool. I'm going to go with Billie Jean. Yeah. No, I'm a sentimental, Billie Jean's I'm a sentimental Beat guy. It. Beat it would be mine. Yeah. Beat it's a good one, too. Oh, thanks. The hits, <laughs> I, I see, I know all of his songs. I know all of his songs, like every song. Yep. I just gear towards like the, the non-hits. What about Smooth Criminal? You know? I like that one. I like, yeah, I, like, I mean, I like all of them. I don't think there's a bad song. So anyway, all right. So just to review, yep, recap. Um, number five was Return to the Mac. Number four, Easy Lover. Number three, To Live and Die in L.A. Uh, number two, Sky's the Limit. And number one, another part of me, Mr. Uh, Louis, what was your top five? Number four was Wake Me Up Inside. Number three was Victory. Number two was Forever. And number one is Breathe. All right, and mine... Uh, number five was Better Now. Number four was All of the Lights. Number three was The Show Goes On. Number two was The Good Life. Number one was Headlines. All right. All right. Those are, uh, those are some good songs, guys. You know what? You're making me want to get up and go work out. So we're going to uh, we're gonna go do a little workout right now. Then we'll be right back. And uh, we're going to be coming back with our debut of our brand new segment, Keat Saw Stools of the Week back in a couple minutes after this workout. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here for our final segment of this episode. I'm exhausted. Yeah, good workout. I'm exhausted. I was, I was playing some Lupe <laughs> in the background. Yeah, some you Lupe know? fiasco. <laughs> All right. It's now time to debut our segment, completely taken over by Mr. Keith, Mr. Keith, it's all yours, sir. Debut in the soft stools of the week. Hey there, sports fans. We know that you had a hard week this week. So to help soften it up, here's Keith with your soft stools of the week. All right, so this is our first, uh, first, you know, installment of soft stools of the week. And uh, just for you guys who don't know, obviously, you know, we, we've had you, yeah, you've had a hard work week, uh, whether it be in quarantine or if you're going out to work. Uh, you know, every day you're working from home. You've had a hard week, so uh, this is this is a feel good story, a funny story to help uh, help loosen it up and uh, ease you into the weekend. All right. So for my uh, my my soft stool of the week, my story for the week, uh, it's going to be one of my personal ones that happened to me when I was younger, and it involves my uh, my younger brother Eric. And this is Rick. All right, and right. Now- all right. So <laughs> <laughs> so this story, first off, it starts off maybe like. I'm going to say probably seven or eight years ago at the time, I was probably like 13. Uh, my brother was probably around like 10-ish, eight, around the age range. So uh, for those of you who don't know, my younger brother, Eric, used to be in a, uh, in a, in a rec, in a rec uh, baseball league. And he used to, he used to be oh, I didn't know that. pitcher. So, yeah, he used to be a pitcher on his baseball team. And in our backyard, uh, we had, we had a, uh, a pitch back set up. For, and for those of you who don't know what that is, you pretty much, it's just a thing. You throw a baseball at it to practice trying to get in the sh- get like strikes and stuff like that, and it comes back at you, okay? So you can catch it, and then you just keep practicing. So anyway, I was outside at the time. It was like a cool, cool, nice, you know, spring day. Uh, I was out there. Eric was out there, my brother, uh, and my dog at the time was out there. <laughs> so <laughs> my dog just, my dog was a, was a huge uh, yellow lab. Her name was Summer. God rest her soul. Great dog. But she was huge. You know, she was ripped. So anyway, what happened was my, my, <laughs> my brother Eric, my brother Eric throws this baseball at, at the strike zone and my dog takes off after the ball, right? She's she's going full speed after the ball. And the ball, mind you, is coming back to my brother Eric. He's about ready to catch it. But my dog came at my brother Eric and literally chopped out. It was a chop block. He took, took his legs out. <laughs> took his legs out and he was riding on the back <laughs> for like a good, oh my a God. good five, like five seconds and he fell off the face planted and he got up and it was like what the heck just happened and dude I laughed so hard I cried <laughs> <laughs> oh my did God. he cry yeah I think he cried he was a little bit he was a little shooken up I laughed at him though you know but that's all for fair games you know with siblings you can laugh at them when they get hurt but not if they're too hurt but he was all right but <laughs> it was wicked funny you had to be there 
Oh, uh, and but, but my my, <laughs> my dog came over with the ball, and uh, yeah, I don't know. We're all better people for it now. Yes. Yeah, it's just like ten. This is like eight years ago. Obviously, before Corona was a thing. This is when swine oh flu was God. still going around. That was a. Uh... We, yep. we hope we, we hope it softened up everyone's everyone's week. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hope, uh, hopefully that gives you a good slide into the weekend. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you if you if you want to know, we'll make sure we have a picture of Eric on our Facebook page just to share the image of him. And you you can definitely see him getting chop blocked by a, a gold a, a lab yeah a dog yeah, yeah. he's a good so. kid he's a character yeah all right but... all right well um yeah continue sorry. No, that's all right. I was just gonna say that that's gonna do it for uh, the first installment of uh, of Soft Stools for the week. So yeah, hope you yes, guys sir. liked it. Hope you guys liked it and enjoyed it. We're gonna have more coming at you. All right, guys, that wraps it up for the Soft Stools of the week. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and remember, always eat your fiber. Have a good one. Make sure to eat your yeah, fiber I've... next week. Make sure to eat your fiber. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, in that, in that. That's right. And that that Mucilex. No, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. no, that's no, no. <laughs> no, there's a fiber one. There's a fiber no, it's one. Granola bars. And yeah. All right. Anyway, well, that's going to wrap it up for uh, this podcast today. We hope you enjoy it this weekend. Um, just to let you know, we have some breaking news. We are now available on a few different platforms. We're available on Spotify and on Anchor. We're also available on some other podcast uh, forums as well. Uh, Breaker, uh, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. So we're on a few different platforms. And we're also on YouTube as well at Studs Podcast. So yep. And you can check ra- out Radio yep. Disney is still pending, so we're still working on that. Trying to radio get on Radio Disney, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and BBC One Radio. We we're still waiting to get on that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you can check those out. Uh, give us a like. You can check us out on Facebook, uh, Facebook dot com slash studs podcast we also have uh you know if you like us and you want to support us on our website at uh, anchor.fm slash studs dash podcast you can uh, check it out maybe leave a little uh donation you can give us some support uh even you know if you want to send us a voice message that we can play live uh we can play on the podcast and with any thoughts about anything we can discuss you definitely do that as well so um for us the couple of bros we are uh, out. We hope you guys stay safe. Uh, continue learning some new things, doing some new things, and uh, washing your hands. Be healthy. Yeah, wash That's your true. hands. So um, that is that, ladies and gentlemen. You have a great weekend, and we will uh, see you next week for our next edition of the Studs Podcast. Studs That's right. Out. Peace. Ow.